Congratulations. You have purchased one of the most innovative and useful woodworking tools to come onto the market in decades. Your Lee Dovetail Jig will help you produce beautiful cabinetry and furniture with that old world look of master craftsmanship. We're very proud of our jig and we want you to get the most out of it. The Lee Jig is easy to use, but like any precision tool, it takes a bit of time to master. This program is designed to give you the information and the visual references you need to start cutting dovetails. So let's get right to it. The dovetail is considered one of the strongest woodworking joints, and it is certainly one of the most beautiful. The dovetail joint is composed of two interlocking pieces. The tail end is so called because it looks like the tail of a dove. In the mating piece are the pins. These slot into the sockets between the tails. The mating angled surfaces form a strong mechanical locking action and provide ample gluing surfaces. The Lee Jig is designed to cut both pins and tails with infinite variability and in such a way that they are always perfectly aligned. The heart of the Lee Jig is this infinitely adjustable finger assembly. The fingers can be easily moved to match your creative requirements. This allows you to design any spacing you wish. This can be done either by measurement or by eye. So, no matter what the width of the workpiece, the perfect layout of tails, pins, and half pins can easily be achieved. Gone are the days of dimensioning your wood to fit a template. And once the jig has been set for a particular configuration of pins, they are automatically aligned for the corresponding tails. Whether you adjust the pins or the tails first, there is an automatic corresponding alignment. It works both ways, every time. The pins and tails are formed in the jig by a router. As you can see, a router is a very effective portable power tool. Provided with a guiding system and many accurate cuts can be made, both simple and intricate. That's what the Lee Dovetail Jig does. It provides a series of precision adjustable guide fingers along which a fixed guide bush in the router base steers the cutter. This means repeatable precision cutting of the two parts of the dovetail joint. Working with wood, particularly with power tools, can be a dusty business. You probably either put on a special outfit or wear an apron or coveralls to protect your clothes. However, it's equally important to protect yourself. Whenever you're working with power tools, we recommend using approved hearing and eye protection. And when you're doing an extensive amount of cutting with a power router, it is also wise to use a filter mask. A router, like all power tools, should be handled with care. The key to safe operation is knowing the tool's capabilities and limitations. The first and most important step is to read your router operation manual and follow all the manufacturer's instructions. Always unplug the router when you are changing or adjusting cutters, and also when the router is not in use. Do not crouch down to watch the router as it cuts. Always keep your face above the level of the router. Woodworking is an enjoyable hobby. Let's keep it fun and safe. To illustrate the variety of dovetails you can produce with your Lee Jig, we're going to cut pieces that will be used in constructing this end table. The first dovetail we want to look at is the through dovetail. The through dovetail is the basic form of dovetail, 
and it can be used for a variety of applications. For this table, we'll be using it for carcass construction. The through dovetail is the first joint you should cut with your lead jig. It's a good one to start with because it will immediately give you the feel of using the jig and making the necessary adjustments with the finger assembly. To start, insert a spacer board under the guide fingers and clamp it down with the rear clamp. Your spacer board should be approximately three quarters of an inch thick by six inches wide and long enough to fit your jig. The spacer board provides a flat, stable platform for the adjustable fingers. Begin work with the finger assembly in the through dovetail pin mode. Set the scales at approximately the central position. In the TD pin mode, the adjusting screws will be facing up and the angled end of the fingers will be toward you. Lower the finger assembly down onto the spacer board and lock the support bracket knobs. Make sure your prepared stock is flat, square and of even thickness. It's a good idea when first doing a setup to work with a test piece. It is easier to visualize the joint layout under the pin guide surfaces. So although we will cut the through tails first, we will design the joint in the pin mode. Put the tail piece in the front vertical clamp face side in to the jig. Make sure it is against the side stop with the end edge flush under the guide fingers. Now, raise the finger assembly about 1 16th of an inch above the tail piece to allow the fingers to slide. Then loosen the fingers and design your joint layout. Typically, in most dovetail joinery, there is a half pin at either end of the joint. As you adjust the fingers by eye or by measurement, Lock them in place firmly, but without over-tightening the screws. Once your layout is complete, make sure that all unused fingers are tightened down. Now, rotate the finger assembly to the through dovetail, tail mode. The fingers are automatically aligned and set for your tails. Set the TD tail scale to the all setting. Lower the finger assembly flush onto the end of the workpiece. Tighten the side support bracket knobs. You are now ready to set your depth of cut. Take your pin workpiece and lay it flat under the guide fingers against the tailpiece. This line indicates the thickness of your pin piece. Check the cutter and guide bush selection chart in your owner's manual and fit the correct bush and dovetail bit in the router. Adjust the cutter to the depth of the line. Now you are ready to route. But before you start, make sure all adjustment knobs and clamps are tight. While you're cutting, keep the router base flat on the guide fingers. When your tail piece is cut, remove it. Replace it with your pin piece, face side out, away from the jig. Remember, always put your work pieces against the side stop and flush up to the guide fingers. Now, rotate the finger assembly back to the TD pin mode. Temporarily set the TD pin scale to the size of the dovetail cutter you used to cut the tails. When that is done, you will need to change the cutter in your router because in the pin mode, we will be cutting with a straight bit. To set the depth of the cut, use the tail piece you have just routed and mark your pin board. Now, set the straight cutter to the pencil line. It is at this point we need to make the adjustment for a tight or loose fitting joint. As you can see, as you move the finger assembly in on the lead jig, the pin size is reduced, creating a progressively looser and looser joint. The further out you move the finger assembly, the larger the pins become and the tighter the joint. 
Each whole division on the scale will change the pin size by only 12 thousandths of an inch. And you can use parts of a division. When you turn the finger assembly over to the TD pin mode, you temporarily set the scale to the size of the dovetail cutter you used. This sets the jig at an average theoretical spot for a good fit. However, because of the variable tolerances in routers, guide bushes, and cutters, we need to find the optimum position through adjustment. We recommend moving the finger assembly toward you by five increment lines. This will give you a tighter fit. Cut at this setting. Now, check the fit. Now, by moving the scale away from you slightly, you can carefully replace the test piece and take further cuts off the pins. Do this as many times as it takes to get a snug fit. Once you have established the setting for this combination of cutters, record the scale setting in your manual. This notation will eliminate the need for test setups in the future and allow for assured repeatability. Remember, once you are set up, you can route as many pins or tails as you like with complete accuracy. And any one of the pin ends will fit any one of the tail ends. For our end table project, we are cutting several large pieces with through dovetails. Eventually, these will fit together to create the sides and top of our table. The next joint we want to construct is one which is ideal for shelving and partitions. And we'll be using it to produce our main drawer support. This joint is a bit different in form from other dovetails because it does not go together in the usual way. It slides together and locks. Naturally enough, it's called a sliding dovetail. Flip the finger assembly end for end to the half-blind tail mode. Set the same scale setting at either end. This is to parallel the finger assembly to the jig. After marking a center line where you want the dovetail slot to go, insert the piece under the finger assembly and the rear horizontal clamp. Position two scrap strips slightly less than the thickness of the workpiece, one on either side. This will give a clean entry and exit cut to the side grain of your workpiece. Insert the cross-cut bar into the finger ends. This bar allows us to straight cut in the body of a board or along the edges. Ensure that your work is square to the jig and the slot center line is half the diameter of the guide bush from the cross-cut bar. Securely tighten the rear clamps. In all of these operations to create a sliding dovetail, you use the same dovetail cutter, set at the same depth with the same guide bush. Typically, the depth of cut should be about one-third of the workpiece thickness. When cutting the slot, it is important to route from left to right, keeping the guide bush firmly in contact with the cross-cut bar. To cut the dovetail, insert your spacer board and bring the finger assembly down on it. Place your dovetail piece flush under the fingers and cross-cut bar. Because of the infinite variety of cutter guide bush combinations and thicknesses of tail stock, it is impossible to determine a setting on the scales for the first cut. The scales are used only to keep the finger assembly parallel and to enable you to record the correct setting. Take off a moderate amount of wood on your first pass. Route from right to left to get a clean shoulder and then finish left to right. Turn the board and repeat your cut on the back side.
test the fit in the slot. If it is too tight, replace the board and move the finger assembly away from you slightly. Then shave off equal amounts from each side until a proper fit is achieved. Again, you can record the setting for future use with the same cutter depth and thickness of stock. For our end table, a sliding dovetail will be used to create our main drawer support. We would like to look now at another dovetail, one which is ideal for drawers, cabinets, and chests anywhere where the front of the joint needs to be concealed. This very attractive joint is called a half blind because as you can see here, only one side of the mating parts is visible on the finished corner. The half blind dovetail is cut with a single dovetail cutter. With this joint, it is the depth of cut that determines the tightness of fit. In order to determine the precise depth of cut, we use an easy intermediate test cutting setup. That intermediate step incidentally produces an end-on-end -end dovetail, a very useful joint in itself. Check your manual for the correct cutter guide bush combination and the starting point for depth of cut. For this procedure, the finger assembly should be in the half-blind tail mode. Install the spacer board and lower the finger assembly. Working with scrap wood, insert a half inch thick piece in the front vertical clamp. Make sure it is butted up to the side stop. Slightly raise the finger assembly and adjust the fingers to your design. When finished, lower the fingers onto your workpiece. Set the scale to one inch. Route the waste from the scrap work piece to produce a set of through tails. When you have finished and removed your tail piece, fit your other work piece into the front vertical clamp against the side stop. Rotate the finger assembly to the half blind pin mode, set the scales to the half inch setting. Using the same dovetail cutter at the same depth of cut, route the second piece. Although in the pin mode, what you are creating is actually another set of tails. The two pieces you are cutting will produce an end on end joint. Test the two pieces for fit. If the joint is loose, lower the cutter. If the joint is tight, raise the cutter and cut fresh test pieces as necessary. Once you have achieved your desired fit, you have established the correct depth of cut for the half blind dovetail. Keep this successful test piece as a depth gauge for future quick setups. Now that the depth of cut is set, rotate the finger assembly to the half blind tail mode. Fit the tail piece into the front vertical clamp bar face side in toward the jig. Slightly raise the finger assembly and arrange the fingers to your choice of joint layout. Now lower the assembly back securely onto the spacer board. All you have to do is set the HB tail scale to the thickness of the tail piece. Cut some quarter inch by half inch hardwood pieces and fit them into the slots provided in the tail ends of the fingers. These pieces should fit snugly. These bridge pieces provide a continual guide surface between the two fingers. If your finger spacings are less than a quarter inch, you will not require the bridge pieces. When your tail piece is cut, remove your work piece. Rotate the finger assembly to the half-blind pin mode. 
fit a waist stop piece in the front vertical clamp with the top edge slightly above the main jig body. This acts as a stop for your pin piece. The pin piece slides under the finger assembly and up against the stop piece, face side down. This positions the workpiece perfectly in line with the front face of the jig. Make sure it is snug against the rear side stop and clamp tightly. Lower the finger assembly and tighten the support bracket knobs before routing. Set the HB pin scale to the same setting as on the tails, that is, the thickness of the tail piece. When you're cutting half blind pins, because of the texture of the end grain, always route from left to right. Use several shallow cuts. Test for a flush fit. If after your first cut the tails are not deep enough in the sockets, move the finger assembly away from you. Then cut the sockets again to deepen them for a precise fit. To finish our end table, we have to cut two half blind corners for the drawer assembly. The three most common dovetail joints, the through, the sliding, and the half blind, have all been cut to add beauty and lasting construction value to our table. As we piece this project together, and the sections join and lock, each dovetail plays a unique role. The final product of our labors presents us with both the beauty and durability of dovetail construction. This is the sort of work the Lee Jig is designed to foster. Beautiful, functional furniture with the look of the master craftsman. The beauty of the Lee Jig is its versatility. No matter how imaginative your dovetail projects are, this jig can help you create them. Let's look at some other types of dovetails that are possible using the Lee Jig. The first joint we want to look at is the rabbited half-blind drawer front. This joint is used on drawers which have a rabbit or lip on the front. Because of the lip, the work pieces must be slightly offset in the jig. When you put your pin piece in the jig, it will be stepped away from the side stop by the width of the rabbit. Therefore, when you put the tail piece in the front of the jig, it too must be offset from its side stop by exactly the same distance. This is done by using a small block of wood the same width as the rabbit. Likewise, the rabbit on the end of the pin piece must be allowed to project over the front of the jig face. A block of the same thickness as the rabbit width should be put between the waist stop piece and the front of the jig. Other than these adjustments for the rabbit, this joint is set up and cut in exactly the same way as a regular half blind. So far, all the dovetails we have looked at are based on square joints. But the Lee Jig also allows you to readily create a variety of angled dovetail joints. The first of these is the simple angled dovetail. It is used mainly in the construction of such pieces as cradles. The secret of angled dovetails is in stock preparation. One of the two corner pieces must be angled across the width of the board. This will give you a simple angle. Your lead jig comes with accessory angle side stops that attach to the jig using captive nuts which slide in the jig body. Set these side stops loosely. Put the angled edge of the workpiece under the guide fingers and tighten the side stop flush to the workpiece. 
clamp the workpiece and adjust the fingers to suit your design. Then cut pins and tails as described in the through dovetail section. The next angled dovetail joint is the compound angled. It is made in a similar way to the angled dovetail, but in this case, all workpieces are angled across the width of the board. This will give you a compound angle. Using the adjustable angle side stops, mount all workpieces at their angle. Again, adjust the fingers to suit your design and cut as you would for a regular through dovetail. Another important angled dovetail joint is the obtuse. This is a joint with an angle greater than 90 degrees. Obtuse joints are useful in creating stools and steps. Again, the secret is initially in stock preparation. Here, by angling the blade of the table saw, the boards are cut to the desired angle across the end edge. This produces the obtuse angle. To cut obtuse dovetails, it is necessary to make up a set of auxiliary angled jaws with the same angle as the saw cut. These jaws fit into the front of the jig. For obtuse through dovetails, the top of the tailpiece should always be angled away from the jig. Turning the jaws over end for end angles the top of the pin piece correctly toward the jig. Do your creative finger layout and again set up and cut as you would for a through dovetail. Angling the pin piece away from the jig and the tail piece toward the jig has the opposite effect and produces acute angled dovetails with corners less than 90 degrees. Please note that these three types of angled joints can also be easily cut as half-blind dovetails. The end-on-end -end joint can also be mitered to different angles. We have now covered the most important dovetail joints, the ones you will be using most frequently. Now is a good time to recap some very important points about dovetail creation. Although we have used only one model of router in this demonstration, virtually any type of router of one horsepower plus can be used. Use scrap pieces to familiarize yourself with the jig and when doing your setups. When a setup is complete, then cut your quality work pieces. Remember, it is only in setup procedures that you will alternate from tails to pins. In production routing, you use the pre-recorded settings and route batches of tails, then batches of pins. The face side of your workpiece, that is the side that will show in your finished project, always faces into the jig, with two exceptions. Work pieces for through dovetail pins are the only ones which face away from the jig. End on end dovetail pieces alternate from face side in to face side out at each end. There are only four ways to fit the finger assembly. Rotating the finger assembly means turning it over. This will access the pin mode and it will access the tail mode. Flipping the assembly is turning it end for end. This accesses the through dovetail mode or it accesses the half blind dovetail mode. The active finger guide surfaces are always at the top front of the assembly. The active scales are always the ones the bracket arrows point to.
you can't go wrong. Remember, do not measure your depth of cut from the base of your router. The depth of cut is actually the amount of cutter below the guide fingers which cuts into the wood. With the through dovetails, it is the depth of cut which determines the thickness of material which may be used. Lee Industries makes available a range of optional cutters which allows you to cut dovetails in wood up to one and a quarter inches thickness. With the exception of sliding dovetails, there are only two guide bush sizes to use with your Lee jig. They are 7 sixteenths of an inch and 5 eighths of an inch outside diameter with a projection from the base of 3 sixteenths to 5 sixteenths of an inch. When using the 5 eighths inch bush, use the Lee wrench gauge to space guide fingers apart by at least 3 sixteenths of an inch. Always keep the cutter shank well into the collet, and the collet as low as possible. A good tip is to push the cutter too high, tighten the collet, then lower the collet to get the correct cutter depth. Make sure the collet does not rub, and before routing, be sure to check for unobstructed rotation of the cutter. It should rotate freely between the guide fingers. And always remember, safety first. We would now like to discuss an important component of dovetail creation, router technique. Using your router correctly will save time and expense by making sure that you cut your pins and tails cleanly. When you are routing, always make sure that the router base is flat on the guide fingers. Use a consistent, steady downward pressure. not tilt the router. When routing, don't use excessive side pressure on the guide fingers. Let the router do the work. And keep your face above the finger assembly. Bending down to watch the cutter is not only dangerous, but it will probably impair your cut. To help guide your cutting, Put a mark with a felt tip pen on the top center of the router base, away from you. Use this mark as an indicator of the alignment of the cutter. For the cleanest cuts, when possible, use back routing. This is moving from right to left across the opening being cut. For example, when cutting pins, use the following cutting sequence. Cut a back route across the front from right to left. Cut through against the right hand guide surface. Cut left to right in the rear. Back out on the left guide surface and waste away the remaining material in the center. Remember, the cutter rotation drives the router from right to left. Always ensure that you have firm control of the router when back routing. Do not back route the end grain in half blind pins. Now that we've had a look at the capabilities of the Lee jig, let's go through the assembly procedure so you can get your jig properly set up for dovetail cutting. Your Lee dovetail jig comes partially assembled. All you have to do is make some adjustments, set the jig in a solid position, and you're ready to go. First, insert the four square nuts, two in each extrusion. These are the angled side stop anchors. Next, insert the T-bolts with the lugged side stops, flat washer, lock washer, and nut. Finger tighten. Use the stepped gauge on the Lee wrench to position the side stops in from the end of the extrusion. Double check each pair of side stops for alignment with two squares. Adjust if necessary and then tighten the nuts firmly. Fit the four springs to the T-bolts. Fit the two clamp bars and the four knobs to the front and top of the jig. 
make sure the clamp bars float freely. The Lee logo should be on the rear clamp bar facing you. Fit the support brackets marked right hand and left hand into the body of the jig. Fit the bracket knobs with their nylon washers. Raise to full height and tighten the knobs. Place the finger assembly on the bench with the finger screws upward. The angled ends of the fingers are away from you. Back off the scale screws. Use the color coding to fit the scales with the half blind tail scale to your right at each end. Do not tighten the scale screws yet. Now, slide the complete finger assembly with the loose scales onto the support brackets. Set the arrows at three-quarter HB tails and tighten the brass thumb screws. Finally, tighten the scale screws firmly with the screwdriver provided. To assure correct realignment of the finger assembly, always follow this procedure whenever the scales are removed from the finger assembly. Move the guide finger at each end of the finger assembly outward to touch the scales. Then lock them. Put a plastic cap on each end of the crosscut bar and check it for fit. Finally, fit the hold-down T-bolts in the slot under the front extrusion. The jig can now be bolted to a board, which in turn can be clamped to a bench. For a more comfortable working height and space for longer work pieces, you can create a box and mount your jig on that. You should now have left over four adjustable angled side stops, four bolts, four washers, and two cutters, as well as your screwdriver, wrench, and manual. We have now completed the basics of dovetail cutting with the Lee Dovetail Jig. If you haven't already done so, we strongly recommend that you set up your jig and begin to practice cutting the primary examples we've illustrated, the through the sliding, and the half-blind dovetail. Please continue to use this program for review. As we mentioned earlier, it is designed to give you the information you need to get started on dovetail construction. It is also meant as an adjunct to your printed owner's manual. This manual is very comprehensive, and once you've mastered the basics of dovetail cutting, please use it to lead yourself into more complex work. At Lee Industries, one of the things we are most proud of is the adaptability of our dovetail jig. Woodworkers are continually finding new ways of using the jig and are creating some very beautiful furniture utilizing its flexibility. We're delighted by reports we get from all over the world about successes achieved with our jig. We would also like to hear from you. Please tell us about your projects. And if you have any questions about the Lee Dovetail Jig, anything that we haven't covered in this program or in the manual, please contact us. Stay in touch. We're always pleased to hear from woodworkers, both professional and amateur, who are using our products. Good luck and happy woodworking.